to Shattering Miss, a program devoted to the largest segment of society. For those of you who, like me, have come to realize that all of the world's religious, political, economic, academic, media, and military institutions are corrupt, that they are counterproductive. I am Yada. Our number, if you'd like to join us any time over the next two hours, is toll-free. Scott's back. He's uh, come back from Las Vegas, where I'm sure he's won enough money that he will gladly pay for your phone call. 877-300-7645. Well, and I don't he, gamble, so I'm oh, not well. really a gambler. So oh, well, I think I'm coming back with any extra money. Oh, so that doesn't mean you're so skilled at the craft that it's not a gamble when you play? I don't even play. Oh, okay. <laughs> but everything in Las Vegas is very inexpensive. The hotel rooms, the meals, the shows. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, not really. So. No, you came back poorer than you left? Intentionally, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. You didn't gloat this morning when I uh, said hello, uh, and you had every reason to. USC uh, uh, did something I thought was foolish uh, to begin with. They, uh, they hired uh, Steve uh, Sarkeesian from uh, Washington to be their head coach, and Sarkeesian, um, well, he had a poor year last year, and this year he's already got two losses in the first two uh, games of the conference. He showed up drunk at a, uh, at a pep rally, showed up uh, drunk two games ago, uh, and now um, showed up drunk over the weekend to, uh, to football practice. Me thinks we have a problem. Yeah, um, I wasn't going to uh, rub it in. I, I wasn't going to rub it in or anything to you. Um, as somebody who has had his fair share of coaching issues on his favorite teams, um, I figured I'd let this one slide in hopes that you would do the same for me in the future. Uh, okay. But <laughs> you know, uh, Minnesota. Uh, speaking of letting things slide, Minnesota. Uh, I don't know how they did this past weekend, but two weekends ago they lost to Northwestern, and you know, it was just assumed that they got slacked by Northwestern because Northwestern was a much better team. But did you see what Michigan, what Harbaugh's Michigan did to Northwestern over the weekend? Yeah, I thought after Harbaugh lost to badly to Utah, which turned out to be a really good team. Man, he has uh, got the Wolverines on a roll. Yeah. I'm, I'm not happy about it, but yeah. <laughs> My uh, son's school is now uh, the second highest ranked team in the country. Uh, who knows why, considering the fact that uh, Ohio State hasn't looked good in any game that they've played thus far this year, but based on their uh, good luck and good fortune uh, at the end of last season, they, uh, they're still ranked number one, although... What does it matter in a beauty contest, right? Very little. Um, back to the Sarkeesian thing quick. Um, obviously, this is alcoholism. And for him to – and he's been, he's been suspended by the team now, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because they said he's not healthy. Yeah, he's been suspended by the team. Um, what what's their next step on that? Do they do they go away from them in the off season or do they try and? Cause they're, yeah, they're, who knows? I'm I'm sure they're looking uh, at the uh, the fine print of their the purchase agreement on Sarkeesian, which is probably between four and five million bucks, uh, to see if in fact uh, being drunk and disorderly uh, is a a reason to to terminate the uh, the contract. Right now they're um, they're looking like they're following the the high ground by saying you're suspended, not fired. But uh, Hayden, their athletic director, is a Rhodes Scholar and an attorney. He is uh, probably now determining whether or not he can let him go because uh, that was a bad hire. The uh, the big thing, I guess, for me would be that um, they've admitted now that he's he's not healthy. So, I mean, doesn't that now fall under the, the mental, uh, the health thing? Uh, issues that would come with through firing someone? Yeah, I don't know. You know, it's uh, uh, alcoholism is, uh, well, it is a an addiction, um, you know, and you're, uh, some people are more or less prone to it than others. Uh, I don't know, you know how it's going to fit into the uh, the contract law. I'm not, uh, I'm not expert on that. I, I can tell you that if you're abusing alcohol, you shouldn't uh, solicit jobs at uh, universities in high-profile positions um, working with um, with uh, 
uh, in, in sports. You just, you just ought not do that. No, that was a really I, bad call. I 100% agree, um, and and they should have did more in the hiring process. It's not like this just pops up. No, no, no. In fact, let me say that uh, there's now plenty of evidence uh, uh, in his uh, personnel records at, with the uh, assistant coaches that at Washington that uh, he had a, a real battle with alcohol there. Yeah. Your athletic director is 0 for 2 on football coaches, by the way. Lane yeah. Kiffin to the Sarkeesian did not. That is not a good stretch. <laughs> no. No, it's... Uh, <sighs> Uh, it's been it's been bleak at uh, at Troy. Uh, speaking of uh, a bleak, you probably heard that uh, over a hundred people were uh, killed uh, in uh, Turkey's uh, capital Ankara um, because of a twin suicide bombing blast. Uh, these uh, the blasts um, went off uh, where uh, the a pro Kurdish party uh, was engaged in a rally. Um, the death toll is estimated at 128 at this point. Uh, and, uh, and yet, even though that day and the following day the Turkish government was bombing the Kurds, and even though the Turkish government has declared war on the Kurds and is uh, anni- attempting to annihilate them, and there, you know, it's a 40 million population ethnic group, and even though the uh, the Kurds are principally uh, Sunni Muslims, the um, <sighs> Turkey blamed uh, the Islamic State for the blasts. I'm not buying it. I think there's a zero possibility that that occurred. If you are the Islamic State, and you know that Turkey is uh, is uh, part of the coalition that is allowing American warplanes to use its territory to bomb you. You are not attacking a group of people inside of Turkey that are trying to uh, uh, to weaken the Erdogan government. There's a 0% possibility of that. And when people say things like that, and the press reports it, you just got to shake your head and say, is everyone in the world so dumbed down? So incapable of of reason that they'll buy that kind of nonsense? Is it is it that if you blame the Islamic State that no one will question it? It's like back in the day, blaming Al Qaeda as opposed to Islam played uh, in the media of the world. Now the fact is that uh, Erdogan is opposed is vehemently opposed to as a Islamic dictator. Both the secularists that were meeting there in the capital, as well as the Kurdish uh, party, and has done everything he can to annihilate both. And here you have a suicide bomber having killed 128 of them. Who knows how many were uh, were wounded? Of course, those who are saying is that the government perpetrated this crime, but the government has furiously denied suggestions that it was involved in the attack itself. You're right. You know, when uh, line politicians have denials like this, the only thing you can know for certain is that they're lying. Yeah, the blast took place. place near a a train station as people gathered for a march organized by leftist groups demanding an end to the violence between the Turkish government and the Kurdish separatist PKK movement. And you think that it was a, the government wasn't involved? And you think that the Islamic State would have uh, lashed out at them? Wow. Wow. We are stupid. In an expected uh, announcement, the PKK, that is the political and religious organization to which the Kurds belong, declared a unilateral ceasefire on Saturday, calling on its own fighters to halt its guerrilla activities in Turkey, except in cases of self-defense. However, on Sunday, the Turkish military said that it had carried out airstrikes against the Kurds attacking targets in southeastern Turkey, as well as Kurdish positions in northern Iraq, killing 
50 people. Wow. What a mess. I mean, you just can't fix the things that Islam corrupts. This, um, is, it, is it at the point now where they've lied for so long that they just can't tell the truth? Is that what this is? Well, you know, you have a religion that condones lying. So, you know, when you have a religion where Muhammad routinely told his assassins to deceive to make their victims easier prey, and then told them when they had some remorse for, for killing nursing mothers with their children in their bed, that uh, they should feel no guilt, that Allah just doesn't care that they murdered a woman nursing her children, that whose only crime was to say that Muhammad wasn't credible. And, uh, you know, the Quran says that Allah reneges on his vows. The Quran says that Muhammad reneges on his vows. If you've got in your Hadith and Quran acknowledgments that both your wannabe God and your wannabe prophet are avowed liars, why would anyone trust them? And then, so in the religion, since Muhammad and his wannabe God, Allah, say that a, any testimony, any treaty, any agreement, any promise between a Muslim and a non-Muslim is not binding on the Muslim. In other words, you can lie all you want to. In fact, you should lie to make your prey more easily ravaged. You have Muslims doing this routinely, deceiving. But why? the, the, the question is, if you were the least bit rational, why would you deceive so as to murder, in this particular case, 170 people? Why would you lie to kill 170 people on behalf of a God that you know you can't trust? I, I have no answer for that. And, but even when they tell the, even when they do tell the truth, we don't we don't listen to it. Um, oh, one yeah, guy said, yeah. you know, we're we're going to ride democracy as our vehicle to. That was Erdogan. Yeah, that same guy. Same yeah. guy. So yeah. we're going to ride democracy as the vehicle to uh, undermine the uh, the West. Exactly. It's all about the deception. Deception works if you're Satan. One of the most popular Facebook posts in Iraq, particularly, uh, is, uh, is one uh, that is religious and political and militaristic all wrapped into one. It's um, got an individual with a photoshopped Shiite uh, um, headband. And it's that of Vladimir Putin of Russia. He's dressed in uh, the robe of a, uh, a southern tribal sheik. It was uh, the American late invasion in 2003, of course, that toppled the enemy of the Shiites, Saddam Hussein. It empowered Iraq's longest, long repressed Shiite minority. And of course, while the Shiites were repressed in the sense of they didn't have as many uh, plum government jobs, and they were not as free as were the Sunnis in Iraq, they weren't subject to government mass extinction. When America empowered and armed the Shiites in Iraq, they used those arms to exterminate the Sunnis. That's why the Islamic State exists today, was to defend Sunnis against their American-sponsored mass murder um, by Shias. Well, when they rose to power, they behaved badly. And the United States continued to arm them, but even in its airstrikes against the Sunni militants that they themselves caused to exist, it has been insufficient, according to the Shiites, who have at all possible opportunities throw down their weapons to further arm the Sunnis of the Islamic State. And so, since they're unwilling to fight um, for their own defense, just completely unwilling to do so, no matter how well we arm them, they're now applauding Vladimir Putin for coming to their rescue. Boy, we are in a very strange world. But 
one of the things, and no one has brought this up yet, that that the reverence, religious reverence now for Vladimir Putin among the Shiite Muslims shows, is that this war is nothing more than Shiite Iran trying to further assert its influence in the region and to show its murderous hatred towards Sunni Muslims and Sunni Muslims showing their intolerance towards this increase in power sponsored by America of Shiite Islam. And that Putin is on the side not of Syria, and we ought not think of him on the side of Syria. He's being celebrated in Tehran and in Baghdad, which is now part of Iran West, thanks to America. This whole episode is because the United States, based on a pile of hypocrisy and lies, lured Putin into a, uh, into a situation where his only viable option was to increase his economic ties with Iran. And therefore, in support of Iran in Syria, the Russians are now engaged. Boy, and it's astounding that the U.S. military, NATO, U.S. Congress, the President of the United States, U.S. Senate, academicians, the media, no one saw this as the inevitable consequence of our stupidity in the Ukraine. It's a consequence. That's the thing I think that bugs me the most, Scott, about the world as we see it today, is the absolute inability of politicians, of military officers, of intelligence officers, of the media, of academicians, to understand cause and consequence. Everybody was bashing Putin for his involvement in the Ukraine when it was obvious the United States had set up the whole mess, and then by sanctioning Putin and Russia, that we created these ties between Russia and Iran that were inevitable due to the pipelines and, uh, and oil wealth and gas wealth around the Caspian Sea, that we strengthened those ties. And then we wonder why Russia engages on behalf of its client, not Syria, Iran. Is there a single leader in politics that, or, or the military or any of those other things that you, that you, you said there mm -hmm. that are actually trying to do what's best for the, the best for their people? Yeah, I think the, uh, the president of Hungary, by saying, you aren't letting the Muslims flow through here by the millions and disrupt our country. So you have um, occasionally one that will hold his head up. And I think uh, Netanyahu's speech before the United Nations was absolutely brilliant, but also misguided in that his principal foe is not Iran. It's actually the Islamic State. Do you ever just get a feeling the pit of your stomach that just gives you the chills? I had one uh, over the break. I've been saying that doesn't seem to be anyone in politics or the media or in the intelligence community, academia, anywhere, that seems to be able to assess cause and consequence, that seems to be able to understand the consequence of the things that we did in the Ukraine, how they led to the things that happened with Iran, how that now has played out in Syria to such horrific consequences. But then it dawned on me, what if NATO and the Obama nation, what if they were calculating all of this, that the intent was to divide the world? I was reading this, uh, this particular line. It says, Russia's intervention in Syria has outraged Sunni Muslims, something that I told you would happen last week, in the region, and uh, and yet the Shiites see uh, his intervention as so positive they're now calling him Sheikh Putin. So by doing this, the world has in fact been divided. You have the United States and Europe with, in league now with the Sunni Islamic nations despising Russia's involvement. 
and would not even consider doing business with Russia. And then you have the Shiites with Iran and Syria and in league with China and Russia, and China and Russia now in league with one another in wholesale opposition to not only Sunni Islam, but to the United States and Europe. Did they really want to push the world into world war? What do you think, Glenn? Are they just bumbling buffoons or maniacal? They are maniacal, sociopathic, insane people. And, you know, they can, can continue to do the same types of things. You know, you don't expect different results. And when you look at what they're continuing to do, we now have the, I believe it's the U.S. Secretary of the Navy who wants to sail U.S. Yeah. naval vessels through the waters of the South China Sea near China's Arctic yeah. Island. I, I read that. They, that. The Chinese consider it their territorial waters. We consider it international waters. And these geniuses want to sail naval vessels through there as a provocation. Right. China's already on the ground in Syria. They're the country from which we get most of our consumer goods. You're right. Um, what exactly are they thinking? Did you see the video? 60 million people have watched it. The video that the Chinese government put out of uh, it responding to American provocation in this regard and taking out a Nimitz-class uh, U.S. Uh, aircraft carrier? I've been saying this for years. I remember saying to my parents, years, you know, three years ago, don't be surprised if you wake up one morning and to, to video on CNN of a U.S. aircraft carrier on fire or sinking or, or sunk. Yes. You know, this, this could easily happen. And they seem to be <laughs> pushing things in this direction. Yeah, the only thing that's not going to happen is it's not going to be good video because it's not going to be on fire, and you're not going to watch it flounder. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not going to be there. It's, oh, it's, 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 it's going to go fast, from go down from down. being there to not being there in a matter of uh, 30 minutes. seconds. Yeah. Yeah, a minute. Yeah. The, yeah, the, the technology that the that the Chinese have is uh, the Russians have it too, by the way. Yeah, they, uh, they, I even they, understand they, the Iranians they, have it, which is that they uh, they detonate a very fast traveling torpedo, uh, something in the range of uh, 300 uh, feet or so below the the carrier. So they don't they're not trying to, to hit the carrier; they're it's below the carrier, and it creates a hole? yeah, it creates a um, uh, a vacuum yeah uh, of sorts uh, where uh, a water actually an air bubble is what it creates and so the the ship which is which weighs you know thousands of tons but is uh, it floats because of the water that it displaces well it won't displace air it'll displace water it won't displace air and so it, it breaks the uh, the keel of the oh. ship and it sinks in a hurry yeah right yeah, that, that um, yeah, they, that that and the missiles they have that are like Mach three and oh yeah, 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 the Chinese they, 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 they the head of the Chinese war. government said, you know, if the United States wants to uh, to uh, play war and they think that they can provoke us, uh, they need to understand that we have devoted ourselves to being able to respond to the American military. They, you know, it's not going They're to be already, yeah, the, yeah, and they, they don't learn. They, they supposedly have, you know, first of all. So, well, for, okay, naval warfare is past that. If you look at the, the last major naval exchange, with the fault mm -hmm. between Britain and Argentina, and right. look at the beating that, that was taken by the British Navy then, and right. the technologies then were nothing like we have now, and so naval warfare is past that. Correct. You know, that, yeah, it, it's... Oh, just, they're it, dinosaurs. It's, it's, it's amazing that we continue with the pretense of building these uh, ships. We've got two carriers under construction right now, new kidder carriers, yeah. and we've got the, you know, the, the Joint Strike Fighter, which is a, an airplane too expensive to... In fact, it is the most destructive airplane ever conceived, uh, just like the uh, the stealth bomber. Because the fact that no matter how, and the number, however many you build, it is that destructive to the country building them because it's a it's a complete fiasco. Absolute guarantee to bankrupt whatever country is building them. Yeah, I don't I don't even think it will actually ever be effectively deployed. They may have pushed a few of them there, but uh, basically the. If, they, if we have carriers launching planes, I think they're still going to be relying on the F-18 Super Hornet, you know, primarily, because that thing's just not ready for prime yeah. time. But the, fun, the, okay. the worst thing about it, we've got Kirk also on the line here, uh, Glenn, is that, that the, the Americans 
haven't seemed to learn that there is no foe to which the aircraft carrier and the battle groups and our Navy are an effective deterrent against because they are no deterrent at all against Islamic terrorism because it's too low tech. If you engage Islamic terrorism with our Navy, you're going to lose because of the cost differential and us propagating the war versus them. And, and these are dinosaurs in a, uh, in a world if you're fighting the, the Russians or the Chinese, neither of which you can prevail against. Well, the Russians have recently made some effective use of cruise missiles from the Caspian Sea over flying yeah, you know, yeah, right, yes. into Syria. And, you know, but that's going to get pretty expensive pretty quick. So I think, that, you know, they've made some pretty good sense with those things. But, you know, the, we have the Army War College right out here in Colorado, PA, of all the think tanks, all the military think tanks, and the Virtual World Project in which they can supposedly, you know, simulate, you know, all this stuff. They, they, they simply have to know the consequences of their actions. You yeah, certainly think so. Yeah, you certainly think so. What do you think, yeah. uh, Kirk? Do they know the consequences? Are they bum bumbling buffoons, or do they actually know the consequence of their actions and therefore the most maniacal uh, uh, men ever to uh, to gain power in world history? I was reading over the weekend a um, uh, declassified stuff that's available now about uh, the CIA and the State Department, <clears throat> how they wanted to get rid of Assad in 2006. Mm -hmm. And they uh, they they are maniacal. They yeah. are really horrible. I mean, they sit there like it's a game, uh, and they decided they they break it down to how they would um, attack his family, turn his mm -hmm. maternal side of his family against his maternal side, which had more influence mm -hmm. over him. Uh, we're talking about Assad, uh, the mm -hmm. current one. Mm -hmm. They uh, go into great detail on how to stir up uh, the um, the Sunnis. Mm -hmm. By pitching how uh, the Shias are coming, the Shias are coming. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, there is, it's long and very detailed and very specific on how these people put. How we would lie, cheat, and steal. Oh yeah. Regardless of how many people died. Yeah. Because uh, we thought it was uh, it, that we had the moral high ground of using all manner of despicable uh, behavior to take out the head of state of another country. Well. I keep thinking about that, and I keep thinking, well, why the heck, uh, what's the motive here? It's got to be more than just that. Um, so I ran across something that I really wasn't even that aware of. Uh, before, you, before, you, before you go to that, just okay. think for a moment, Kirk, and Glenn, we still have Glenn with us, too. Just think that, let's say the United States, uh, through clandestine means of uh, using all the depraved tactics uh, available, that the United States engaged in, uh, in taking out Assad. First of all, it's going to be found out, and uh, the United States is going to be embarrassed for the tactics that it used and lose credibility. But second, what are the odds that the person who replaces Assad is going to be... More better? tyrannical. Yeah, yeah it'll be versus, more yeah ver better versus worse. And you have about a 90% likelihood the person is going to be worse, so why would you even engage in such activity? Well, you're assuming they care that he's worse. Then why take him out? Let me tell you why. Why? Go ahead. Yeah, I'll tell you why, too. Go ahead. Go first. Well, here, here's what I did, and it made sense to me, and it's just uh, Arabia, the Saudis, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they, they had a plan to build a pipeline uh, for their uh, oil and their gas to go through uh, the Sinai. And it mm -hmm. would feed into Egypt. It would also feed in Israel. Then it would turn north, and the pipeline would go through Syria. Okay. The um, the Iranians have mm -hmm. the same idea. Uh, obviously, there's the Shias. Their mm -hmm. pipeline is going to go from uh, from Iran to Iraq to Syria. Mm -hmm. So the battleground becomes Syria. Nobody cares about the people in Syria. Nobody cares about which dictators are running it. But now, if the now we and I think that's why we've been courting by treaty the Iranians uh, because the Russians went in, you know, and made all those deals. You reported on them several years ago. They made all the deals with the uh, with the Shias, with the uh, Iranians, mm -hmm. in order to. Uh, be a huge, huge, huge player. They're already got mm -hmm. more oil than they know what to do with, but now they're a huge, huge player. Yeah. 
And they're just fighting over this, the money. Yeah. This yeah, yeah, there seem to be two things that the world cares about, and that is who buys whose arms. Right. Syria buys Russian arms. Iran buys Russian arms. Who buys in Saudi Arabia uh, and Turkey buy American arms? So who buys whose weapons? And uh, who is uh, is in the loop on the extraction, uh, transport, and sale of oil? Because the Iranian pipeline is supposed to go under the Mediterranean all the way to Greece, so they're going to feed Europe. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's the Iranian pipelines actually go through Russia because of the fact that the Russians, the, the Iranians, are uh, are now um, linked at the hip. Um, it's the you know, th this is the the very um, uh, treaty that was required for the uh, Armageddon to play out, and even the Magog second phase of the Magog War for it to play out as it is uh, is laid out. I don't know if any of you you guys ever read a book called Crude Politics. Uh, it was written by a very bright researcher that uh, determined and proved that the Afghanistan invasion had absolutely nothing to do with the Taliban, nothing to do with Al-Qaeda, had everything to do with the Pakistani desire to build a pipeline through Afghanistan. And uh, we went to war because Bush was involved in negotiating that treaty. So, Kirk, you read uh, the recently released documents of how America's clandestine forces, its Department of Homeland Security, the CIA and FBI, and who knows what other uh, knows what yeah uh, other organizations uh, concocted all manner of despicable um, strategies to uh, kill a foreign head of state. Yeah. And um, we think that, oh, that's good. You know, I was uh, reading at the same time um, the declassified documents on uh, Alaki. Um, he's the uh, the American um, uh, fundamentalist Sunni Muslim that was uh, killed um, without uh, so much as an indictment, uh, murdered he and his family in Yemen. Uh, and uh, in his case, uh, from the Freedom of Information Act, we've just learned that in uh, 2002, after it was already known what he was up to, when he was uh, detained at Washington Dulles in a, uh, and, uh, and also uh, at, uh, at JFK in a uh, customs line, the FBI specifically told U.S. Customs, let him go. And they let him come into the United States without any surveillance. As a matter of fact, they used testimony that he gathered for the, uh, um, for the FBI and the Justice Department in a trial for another uh, Islamic terrorist. And then, and then we go and kill him? I mean, oh my God! I mean, you, you read. Uh, I was reading this article this morning, and you just go, I, "How can we be that dishonest?" And and here, this is the FBI, the Department of Justice, deliberately and knowingly circumventing the Justice Department and withholding evidence at trial. Yes, as to Al Capone. Oh, well, it's. I mean, it's, well. Uh, it's, it's important to realize that the whole, you know, the necessity of the truth has been cast off. I mean, right. everything now is consequentialist, utilitarian ethics. You know, the end is yes. by the medium. So, right. so forget about truth. The truth simply doesn't pertain anymore. Uh, yes, it can. Uh, as far as they're concerned. And I'm going to tell you, it doesn't matter what ends you achieve. If your means to that end are immoral, if they're dishonest, you haven't achieved anything. All you've done is uh, is ripped apart your conscience so that you're what? incapable of being moral. That was well, the problem with Machiavelli. I mean, that's why Machiavelli and the prince, when he was writing to a fellow Italian nobleman as to how to best um, influence, use the influence of their papacy in the Royan, uh, the, uh, the uh, Roman Catholic Church, he said the ends always justify the means, and therefore the most effective means to absolute control is terror. You should be a terrorist. Yeah, among humans, having to tell the truth is, um, you know, regarded as a tactical disadvantage. But you know, yes. Yahweh cannot lie. It's right. a disadvantage for him. 
And I think he expects, you know, in order to be like him, we should be the same. So, yeah. um, in reality, it is, it is every advantage. There is every advantage in uh, saying what you mean and doing what you say. Every right. advantage in the yeah. world. Uh, this this uh, line to achieve one's goals being immoral to achieve a result always ends badly. Right. And you, you may end up um, a target if you stand for the truth, but, uh, you know, uh, Yahweh rewards that, you know, whether yes. you're Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or whether you're Yosha, uh, you yes. know, whether you die or whether you don't, um, you're still in better shape, you know, with Yahweh if you yes. stand for the truth. But, but the, um, I, I, about what you were saying about oil. Yeah, you don't have to become an alcoholic or a, a drug uh, addict to deal with your broken conscience when you do these things, you're not, you know, like our Secret Service well, and our uh, FBI out uh, uh, with prostitutes because you, you can't, you're, you're so corrupt, you can't engage in an honest relationship. You've got to, you've got to buy your sense of satisfaction. But those are only the ones that have some remnant of conscience left. Uh, the true sociopaths among our leaders don't have that problem. You know, uh, last week there was a report that uh, rated uh, U.S. government agencies in terms of morale. You know where the single lowest morale is for, for now uh, five years running in the U.S. government? Uh, Department of Homeland yeah. Security. These very Security. buffoons that are using these immoral tactics to achieve what uh, they believe is a political result. It, it, see, if you engage in this kind of behavior, you know, if, if they, when we resort to torture, we the ultimate victim is ourselves. Look, we lose our ability brain. to be civil, to be just, to be moral. Yeah, the love of many will grow cold because of the hardness of heart. Yes, indeed. 